Java 21 has just been released and it's packed full of exciting new features. What I want to do here today is help you get started with Java 21. So how are we going to do that? First, we're going to take a look at some different ways that you can download JDK 21. There are different vendors, there are different versions. Where do I download this stuff, Dan? We'll take a look at that. Once you have it downloaded and installed, we will take a look at the new features in JDK 21. Now there is one list that includes all of the JEPs that are included in JDK 21. What is a JEP, Dan? We'll talk about that in a minute. And then there's a release notes that will go through all of the JEPs as well as any new features, new APIs, et cetera. So we'll take a look at both of those and we'll take a look at them from a high level. We're not gonna go into any of these. Um, we'll write some code, but if you want to deep dive into any of those new features, let me know below and we'll do a video on that. So with that, let's make sure we have Java installed. Let's take a look at the features at a high level and we'll write a little code. All right, so I want to start here at jdk.java.net slash 21. I will put all of the links that we talk about in this video in the description below. But here's your first place where you can grab some builds. If you look over here, you have Linux, Mac, and Windows. So you can grab one of these builds and go ahead and install. Now this is just going to download something you'll have to like configure your uh, environment based on that particular build. Um, so that's kind of the manual way of doing things. A tool that I really love that I've talked about on this channel and on the live stream in the past is SDK Man. And this is a way of managing multiple parallel versions of software development kits. So the software development kits could be uh, JDKs or SDKs. So it does allow you to manage the JDK and all, a whole bunch of other SDKs, like things like Maven and Gradle and Scala and whatever you need. There are a bunch of SDKs here. So if you want to go through the documentation on how SDK man works, I will show you though, if you come in here and you say SDK list Java, it will go through and list out all the different versions for all the different candidates of Java. As you can see here, uh, we have some, some uh, 21 versions already in here. You can start to scroll through this list. It's a pretty long list. Or you could do something like this and just say SDK list Java and then grep out anything that starts with 21. And we can see that we have a bunch of different candidates for 21 here. And you'll see that I have installed the Oracle one and the um, Graal VM one. I actually need to get this latest one installed. So that is that. Once everything is installed, uh, now you can go ahead and double check your version. So I'm going to say Java dash dash version. And we can see that I'm I am running Java 21, and this is the 64-bit version. Um, good to go. So we have Java installed. We can now start writing uh, applications in Java using JDK 21. This means we can take advantage of the new features. But Dan, what are those new features? I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look at that. All right, so here we are on the Open JDK website under Projects JDK 21. And what this is going to do is list out a list of features. These features have numbers next to them. They are known as JEPs, J-E-P, and that stands for the Java Enhancement Proposal. This is how new features get into the Java JDK. So there is a JEP there. Uh, so we'll take a look at this first one called 430, which is named String Templates. And you'll see this is a preview, and that's going to be important. So if we go ahead and open this up, you can look at the documentation for this particular JEP, and these things are packed, filled with information. So there's a quick little summary, enhance the Java programming language with string templates. Um, and then there are some goals. Here's what we really want to get out of this feature. Here's what we're not worried about. And what is the motivation behind it? So there's, they really go into some detail about why this feature was proposed, why it was put into the language. At the end of the day, they have examples here that you could say, hey, this is how I can use string templates in my Java code, et cetera. So there's a bunch of JEPs in here, 15 to be included in JDK 21. If they say preview, this means that you cannot just use them in your applications. You have to enable a preview mode. And we are going to do that for one specific uh, feature that I want to cover. Um, but just know that if it's a preview, you have to enable preview. They get these features that go into the JDK as a preview. 
So now we can test them out, see you know what the API looks like, do we want to use this, and provide feedback back to the maintainers. And once you do that, then maybe some things get adjusted for another preview or for a final release. So there are some previews in here. Uh, if it doesn't say preview, it is in there. You don't need to enable preview. Something like sequence collections is there and ready to go. So I want to take a look at this one because we're going to look at an example of this. I put, a, I put something out on Twitter the other day and it seemed to get a lot of love. So we'll talk about this real quick. This is called unnamed classes and instance main methods. I'll let you kind of dive through here. We can do a deep dive on this later on, which I might because I do teach Java and this is kind of important to me. But the nuts and bolts of this is this is the main code that we write when we're starting to learn Java, right? And there's a lot going on here. What is this access modifier? What is a class in general? What is this public static void main mean? I'm taking in a string array called args, and then I just want to print out hello world, even though I'm not using args. This will go through this and talk about all of those things that's happening. What we want to do is boil it down to void main. This is really helping out those who are just getting started with Java, or if you have some like script that you need to like run, uh, you could probably use that. At the end of the day, when we when it gets compiled, it's compiled to a normal class anyways. Um, so there's no difference at the end of the day, but I think you know getting started with the language this is really going to help out. So we'll take a look at an example of that. So these are all the JEPs in there. Um, go ahead and read through these to see if any of these interest you. The release notes will go into those as well. They will talk about the JEP at a high level, and then you can go in and click through there and find out more. The release notes are also going to give us some more features. So um, here are some things. Um, there's a new split with delimiters method added to string. Uh, so you can read about that. There are, um, I really enjoy this one. The HTTP client is now auto-closable. It implements auto-closable. This means that you can use it in a try with resources statement. Um, and there are a few others, like the string builder now has a repeat method and so on. So if you want to find out what, what is in JDK 21, these two links I will leave in the description below will really help you out. Uh, but with that, I want to write some code. Who wants to write some code? Raise your hand. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to say this is application.java. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio Code. So I'm just using Visual Studio Code to kind of let you know that you can use any uh, text editor or IDE. Some of this stuff is easier in a IDE like IntelliJ. Uh, but if you're just getting started with Java, uh, this you know you can use any text editor that you want. So I have a class here. I have this open to application.java. So again, as we said um, in the beginning, when we started looking at some of these features, when we get started with Java, we might have to write something like public class application, and then we have to write public static void main, and then system out, and this is all gonna work, and then we can run this application and everything is fine. But what I wanna do is take advantage of that new JEP that we looked at, that allows us to kind of cut down on some of that boilerplate. So I'm just gonna type void main system dot out dot print line equals hello world. Now you see the IDE here, the text editor is giving me some warnings saying this is not going to work. That's just because uh, the uh, language level features that we have aren't supporting this yet, but that's okay. This will work, uh, but if we just try to compile this and run this, it's not going to work. So let's do that and see what the compiler tells us. So if we run Java C on our application.java, we see that we get a unnamed classes are a preview feature and disabled by default. Great, uh, and it even gives us some help. Use dash dash enable preview to, uh, to enable unnamed classes. So let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and say Java C. I'm going to give it a specific release here. I'm gonna say uh, release is 21, enable preview, and then application.java. You can kind of ignore those notes. Then I'll say Java dash dash enable preview, and we'll say application, and there's hello world. So this is a valid uh, this is valid syntax in Java 21, and that's just awesome to see. I mean, I wish we can cut down on this verbosity a little, but hey, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get greedy here. 
But this is pretty cool to see. So we're able to use a preview feature of Java 21 in our application. Now let's just go back to our main, our, our longer public class application and public static void main. And I want to use another new feature. So we'll say um, string builder is equal to new string builder. We can go ahead and use that new repeat function. So I'm going to say repeat the asterisk. So uh, let's say asterisk and do that 15 times, right? Um, and then that should be it. So why is this still over here? Um, repeat. Oops, we forgot that. So repeat that 15 times, and then uh, that's cool. Give me a variable called string builder. And I got some questions about this on Twitter as well, which, by the way, if you're not following me, what are you waiting for? Head over to Twitter at the real Dan Vega. What is this for, Dan? Is this new to Java 21? No, this came out in Java 10. So this is now 10, 11, uh, 11 editions ago that this was released. So we can use some type inference there to figure out the type. We don't need to declare the type there. So now I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, print line. This is SB. Now if I'm in um, Visual Studio Code here, I can just run this. I don't need to enable preview mode. And we see we get that string repeated 15 times. All right, and for my final example here, I've jumped over to IntelliJ IDEA. This is my favorite IDE. I love using it. And I want to just take a look at how you can use JDK 21 in here. So here I have an application. I have a couple different packages. I'm working on this sequence demo. So the sequence demo, we have a list of integers called integers. And we say list out of, and then if you notice, all of these numbers are those JEPs that we were talking about before. These are the new JEPs in JDK 21. I put some notes in here to talk about how sequence collection works and how you actually get a list back from the reversed method um, and how you can go ahead and get some information out of there. This example is pretty cool because when you call reversed on it, and you call get first, this is actually the first element now because it's been reversed. So pretty cool stuff, but how do I run this in my IDE? When your application is set up, you can go into your properties here. And so I'll go into my project properties. Let's go ahead and get that out. And if you go into your project properties, you have to set up your SDK. So if you set, so let's say that you've been using Java 17, you can go into edit, or you can easily go into here and then say add an SDK. If you add an SDK, uh, you can point to the one that you downloaded from java.net, or you can point to your SDK installation. Uh, use SDK man a lot, I'll point to that as well. So you see these candidates down here. Once you point to that, this is the important part. You have to go into language level and you want to go down to experimental versions and not just pick 21, but pick 21 preview. So if you want to use string templates, unnamed classes and instance methods or et cetera, you need to pick this preview method because what happens when you run this with the preview method, so if we run this, we now see this here, dash dash enable preview and now it goes ahead and compiles and executes our code. So um, now I did do a demo of this with the unnamed classes and while it will compile and run, you still get some red squigglies in the IDE. I think it's just not caught up yet, but that's okay. It does recognize the language level, enable preview, and it will compile and run. You might just get some, some squigglies, at it, as I said. So cool, that is my first look at Java 21. We were able to download it. We have it installed. We were able to run some uh, different applications. We wrote a preview app. Uh, we used, we got rid of all that ceremony. I, again, I think I want to do a deep dive into that just for kind of getting started with Java, um, why that, that's really important. And I'm looking forward to that. So if you have any of the features in those JEPs or in the release notes and you want me to dive a little bit further into them, do me a favor and let me know below. Also, if you want to, please let me know below what is your favorite new feature in JDK 21? What are you really excited about here? So hey, friends, I hope you found this a little bit valuable. I hope you learned just a little something today. If you did, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.